Welcome to the deep dive. We cut through the noise, uh, get straight to the core of complex topics, and give you the insights you need. Today, we're looking at something really quite surprising out of Canada, a, well, a historic slowdown in population growth happened in the first quarter of 2025. Yeah, our mission here is to pull out the key stuff from this report. It's called Canada's Population Crossroads, a stalled future. We want to make sense of the data for you. Absolutely. And it really brings up a central question, doesn't it? Is this slowdown, this stall, a necessary rebalancing for Canada, maybe even healthy? Or uh, is it actually a warning sign, a red flag for the economy, for society down the line? I mean, what does it really mean when a developed nation sees its lowest quarterly growth since, well, since World War II? Okay, let's get into the numbers because they are pretty striking. In Q1 2025, Canada's population grew by just 20,107 people just over 20,000. That's barely a small town added to a G7 country in three months. It's uh, genuinely the lowest quarterly growth since the Second World War. But here's the paradox, right? This tiny growth happened even though Canada welcomed over 104,000 new permanent residence PRs in that exact same period. So you add over 100,000 people, but the total population barely nudges. How does that work? What's actually going on? That's exactly the puzzle the report tries to solve right away. It um, it zeroes in on two main drivers for this stall. First, a really sharp drop in temporary residence TRs, let's call them. And second, something quite sobering, a natural decrease in population, more deaths than birth. So the report digs into these trends, connects them to the overall population numbers, and asks that key question. Is this a healthy correction or is it a problem? Yeah, because it's such a stark change from just a year or two ago. Looking at the data table they provided, I mean, Q1 2023, they had almost 146,000 PRs and population grew 0.7%. Even Q1 2024, still over 120,000 PRs, 0.6% growth, often boosted by lots of temporary residents coming in. But Q1 2025, over 100,000 PRs arrive and growth is, well, it's basically zero. Zero point zero percent just vanished. It did. And the report breaks down these specific reasons for why Q1 2025 looks so different. Okay, so what's the biggest factor? The report talks about a temporary resident exodus. Sounds dramatic. It says there were, what, 61,111 fewer TRs at the end of Q1 compared to the end of Q4 2024. That's a huge number, leaving or not being replaced. Oh, absolutely huge. And the analysis suggests this wasn't just, you know, random fluctuation. It connects it directly to government policy changes. Wow. Specifically, those new limits put on international student numbers right. and temporary foreign workers. Oh, right. The caps. Exactly. And the government was pretty open about the goal there to try and take some pressure off housing, off health care, transit, all those services feeling the strain. OK, so that's the TR outflow. What else? You mentioned natural decline. Yeah. Yeah. The report says deaths outnumbered births by 5,628 people in Canada during that quarter. That's not insignificant either. No, it's yeah. really not. And it reflects a couple of deep demographic trends. Canada's fertility rate, um, it's running at about 1.4 births per woman, which is, well, it's way below the 2.1 needed just to keep the population stable without immigration. It's called the replacement level. Right. So you've got low birth rates, and then you add in an aging population. The baby boomer generation is getting older, leading to uh, naturally rising mortality rates. Mm -hmm. It's a slow motion demographic shift. Okay, makes sense. And the last piece mentioned is emigration, people leaving Canada. The report says over 17,000 people left in Q1. So that also chipped away at the gains from the new PRs. Exactly. You add up the TR outflow, the natural decrease in the immigration. Mm -hmm. And suddenly that inflow of over 100,000 PRs doesn't look so big anymore. It basically got canceled out. A perfect storm, as you said earlier. So that explains the what and the why. But the big question, the one the report really grapples with, is what this means. Is this slowdown good or bad for Canada? Healthy pause or warning bell? And there are solid arguments on both sides presented in the analysis. Let's take the healthy rebalancing view first, maybe just for the short term. Point one, it definitely eases the housing crisis, or at least some of the pressure. Growth between 2021 and 2023 was so fast, it massively strained housing supply especially in cities like Toronto and Vancouver. Mm -hmm. You felt it. Right. So a slowdown gives a bit of breathing room, maybe allows construction to catch up slightly. Point two, less pressure on services, schools, hospitals, public transport. They were all feeling the crunch. This pause gives them a chance to, well, adjust, maybe improve capacity. Okay. And point three is more political, maybe social. Public concern about high immigration levels was growing. This pause might... Uh, might calm things down a bit, allow for a more measured debate. Okay, those points about easing immediate pressures, housing, services, that makes intuitive sense. But 
Um, is there a risk highlighted that this kind of sharp slowdown, even if temporary, could create its own set of problems? Yes, absolutely. And that brings us to the other side of the debate, the view that this is a potential red flag, especially if it lasts. The biggest concern, looming labor shortages. The report is clear. Key sectors think healthcare, construction, technology, they rely heavily on immigrants, both PRs and TRs. So if that pipeline shrinks too much? You get shortages, serious ones, which impact services and economic growth. Then there's the whole aging without replacement issue. Canada has an aging population, needs younger workers coming in, paying taxes to support retirees and social programs like healthcare and pensions. Right, the demographic math. Exactly. Without steady population growth, that math gets really difficult. And finally, there's the potential for just general economic drag. GDP per capita growth relies on productivity gains, yes, but also on population growth. Stagnation can really hurt living standards over time. So if it's potentially a red flag, what's the recommended path forward, according to this analysis? It seems like they lean towards more permanent residents, but carefully managed. That's precisely the takeaway. The report argues pretty strongly that Canada still fundamentally needs immigration. Given the low birth rate and aging demographics, there's really no other way to sustain population and economic growth. It even warns quite starkly that without a consistent inflow of permanent residents, Canada risks heading towards a kind of Japan-style scenario demographic decline and economic stagnation. And the report really emphasizes why permanent residents are preferred over temporary ones for that long-term stability, right? Yes, very much so. PRs are seen as putting down roots. They buy homes, start families, integrate into communities, contribute to the tax base long-term. They have a stake in the country's future. Whereas TR... TRs, by definition, are more volatile. Their numbers can swing wildly based on policy or economic conditions, leading to those boom-bust cycles in population that can be disruptive for planning services and the economy. So the report pushes this idea of skills-driven immigration using the PR system strategically. How so? Well, by increasing PR admissions, but targeting people with skills in sectors where Canada has critical needs. Like construction, you mentioned, to build more housing. Exactly. Construction is key. Healthcare is another obvious one, given the aging population and existing strains. And also future-focused sectors, green technology, AI, advanced engineering, bring in people who can fill those specific gaps. But it's not just about numbers, is it? The report talks about support. Absolutely critical. Mm. The integration support is key section really hammers this home. If Canada increases PR numbers, it must be paired with real investment in supports. That means more affordable housing options, faster ways to recognize foreign credentials so people can work in their trained fields, not just any job. Mm -hmm. And policies to encourage newcomers to settle outside the huge pressure cooker cities like Toronto and Vancouver, better regional distribution. It's about setting people up for success, making sure integration works. Okay, so Pulling it all together, the message from this analysis seems to be that Q1 2025 was a wake-up call. I think that's a fair summary. Yeah. A wake-up call and maybe an opportunity. It showed the risks of relying too heavily on temporary flows for growth. And highlights the need for a shift towards a more stable, predictable, PR-focused immigration strategy. That's the core recommendation. Moderate the TR inflows to keep services manageable, but strategically expand PR admissions to fuel the workforce and economy long term. And focus on quality attracting immigrants who are likely to integrate well, contribute significantly, and importantly, stay. So a final thought then, building on this, uh, what does Canada's experience here, this balancing act, tell us perhaps about the challenges other developed nations might face trying to manage short-term pressures while ensuring their long-term demographic and economic health? Something for all of us to consider. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive.